Regional anesthesia is awesome. That's a scientific fact. And we all love a good block. But what happens when your fabulous block wears off overnight? Sure, we can add adjuvants to squeeze out a few more hours. But for many of us, if you want long-acting regional anesthesia for days and days, it's time to think about placing a catheter. By and large, perineural catheters are a straightforward concept. Put a needle in, inject some local at the target site, thread a catheter through, take the needle out, and confirm the catheter is in the right spot with some more local anesthetic. But as with many things, the devil is in the details, and in this video, we offer you 10 tips and tricks to maximize your catheter practice. Number 10, use the short axis out of plane approach. Now I love seeing my needle. I'm an in plane guy for the most part, but when your imaging plexus or nerve in short axis and come from the side, it's difficult to get that catheter to just not shoot right by. A good example is a popliteal sciatic. If you image the nerves in short axis like this, it kind of makes sense to come straight down into the crotch of the nerve. That's especially true with catheters, which you can then thread up the perineural sheath. And we have data to show that the out of plane popliteal technique leads to four times fewer displacements than the in plane. Another good spot to try this is the interscalene brachial plexus. Number nine, dress for success. The insertion site, that is. Nothing bums you out more than a catheter that gets displaced, and the integrity of your dressing makes a difference. There are specific devices you can use to clamp the catheter in place, but Amanda Kumar and colleagues did a volunteer study quantifying the force required to dislodge catheters using various dressing combinations. The winning combo was as follows. Start with a dab of cyanoacrylate glue. That's been shown to reduce leakage at the puncture site. We then paint the surrounding skin with benzoin to make it sticky. Then a longitudinal skin enclosure strip to add resistance to tension. Then a chlorhexidine transparent dressing followed by one last simple transparent dressing. This is our magic formula for keeping catheters from falling out. And if the surgeon is going to put sticky drapes over our nice dressing, I like to smear a thin layer of ultrasound gel over the dressing to make sure it doesn't get ripped off with the drapes. Number eight, make the hub pull proof. This is the weakest point in the system, and we used to get lots of calls from patients at home saying the yellow clip has come off. Looping the catheter and wrapping a skin closure dressing around the assembly stops that problem cold. You could hang a patient from the ceiling with that. Okay, maybe not, but it's strong. There are other solutions, and I like this one too with the double transparent dressing doing the same job. Number seven, have someone help you advance the catheter. Especially as you're developing your catheter practice, there's no shame in having a second pair of hands. Needle tip control is critical to proper catheter placement, and this method allows for the first operator to have rock steady hands while an assistant quickly threads in the catheter past the tip. Teamwork for the win! Number six, several manufacturers make a catheter over needle set like a long IV cannula. The proposed advantage is that there's less skin leakage at the site because the item with the biggest diameter is the catheter itself. We like these for blocks like femoral or adductor canal where it's a relatively straight shot in. You can see that once the device has been advanced to the target, the inner needle is removed, leaving an outer cannula. A multi-orifice stylet is then advanced through this, poking out the end of the cannula by a centimeter or so as a safeguard against accidental withdrawal from the target site. An advantage to these is there's no fiddling with the catheter afterwards to get the tip at the right spot. It's already there. Number five, keep your catheter and other equipment close by in order to minimize hand movements that might disrupt the needle position. Here the needle is in exactly the right spot. I've seen trainees let go of the needle, turn around, and start groping through the tray to look for the catheter. I like to have the catheter taped to the drape so it's easily accessible. The operator stabilizes the needle with a non-dominant hand, grasps the catheter, and inserts carefully, maintaining rock-solid needle position the whole time. Beautiful. We're at number four. Once you get slick, you can advance a catheter under ultrasound guidance in real time. This is the hand position I use, third and fourth fingers grasping the needle and index and thumb advancing the catheter. It's nice to be able to see the catheter emerge from the tip to know where it's headed. Number three, if you want your catheter to really stay for a long time, and sometimes we do, I recommend tunneling. It's been shown to increase the force required to dislodge the catheter and also decreases colonization rates. There are different ways to do this, but this is my preferred. Once I've done the injection and advanced the catheter through the needle, I'll pull back the needle a centimeter or two. Then I'll take an 18 gauge, 15 centimeter tui needle, and using the metal stylet, I'll enter the skin using the same puncture site. This will ensure no skin bridge. The stylet is pushed subcutaneously for most of its length, and then the barrel of a syringe is used to tent the skin safely and pop through. We then take the tui and twist it tip to tip with the stylet so it's firm. This whole assembly is then passed back the other way until the tui has popped out the original puncture site. We're now done with the stylet. The block needle is then removed. The end of the catheter is now fed through the tui. Make sure to check for knots, been there. Once the catheter is poking out the other end, you can withdraw the TUI. Keep pulling the catheter through, taking care to stop once it disappears under the skin. 
Lovely, now we're good to go. Number two, when I have to adjust the position of a catheter on the screen, I'll pump aspirate to create a motion artifact within the catheter. The trainee then slowly pulls the catheter back in real time, and when we see the tip in the right location, we stop and confirm with a small bolus. And finally, number one, air is the enemy of ultrasound, so please don't use it to locate your catheter tip. We just saw how you frequently have to pull them back to adjust. Injecting air creates a generalized hyperechoic artifact that then ruins the image for any further manipulation. Can you tell where the catheter tip is? Or the nerves for that matter? Me neither. Let's go back in time and try that again with some fluid. A little bolus here and... Ah, so nice. I can see the catheter and the target nerves I'm after. Hope this was helpful and may all your catheters land in the right place.